Yep. Hello everybody. Welcome, welcome. I am here in my studio and I'm doing a bit of glazing. Raw glazing. Raw glazing, which is so we omit the bisque firing stage altogether and we glaze the pots when they are unfired with the glaze the same way that we would glaze them uh, if they were in the bisque fired state the only difference is that basically the glaze uh, is applied put on in two stages first stage is to glaze the inside and then just wipe it off and the second stage is to glaze the outside all right um, these ones I've done here I've got these few more to do so let's just get that over the bucket there dee 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 yeah, this is my uh, sort of milky white glaze. Hang on, I'll clean that and then you can take down the recipe. It's a, it's a good glaze, I think. It's very stable. Um, I don't know if you can read that. Uh, I'm not going to read it out. It's pretty readable, I think. So, grab the still of this clip and copy that down. It's a good glaze at cone 10, cone 9 to 10. Um, it behaves well, it's reliable, it, prov it, it gives one a, uh, a shiny Here's an example on this mug. Uh, it's the glaze that's on the inside and the outside. It's this. It gives you a kind of milky grey, bluey, not the blue here where the wash is, but the, in between here, this sort of, this lighter. Which gives you a, a good background if you want to do some, some brushwork decoration which I want to do on these. So, right, give the glaze a good stir, as always. I'll glaze one with the camera in that position and then I'll... So at this, at this I'm actually kind of low with glaze in the bucket. So I'm just gonna dip it down. Yeah, because the bucket, the glaze, I've got to just tilt the bucket a little bit. So I don't know if you can see that there, just on the top, it's just... Like that. It, it dries... Pretty much like if I was doing it on top of bisque, I suppose bisque dries fractionally, fractionally faster. Uh, and this glaze, this 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 glaze is is the same as I used to apply to the bisque. The only difference is I added a little bit of I added a little bit of bentonite to it just to. And I don't know if I needed to have done that, but I did. I added about 2% bentonite to, to that recipe. Well, it's actually, I think it's, it's on the lid there. I think on the bottom, I think, I think it says. 2% is not very much. And that's fine, you know. So dipping it down, my finger's on the bottom. So I've got to just tilt the bucket a little bit, you see, just to get the depth. Pull back the camera. 
pull back the camera a little touch. So we're not quite so close. So my aim is to glaze these without getting any glaze on the bottom, okay? So nothing worse than having to have to clean, wipe off the So I keep that clean, you see. Just saves saves time, doesn't it? Yeah, some people tell me they, they hand paint glaze on or they spray it on, but I'm a dipper myself. One more, last one. Then we're going to go, and I've got some GP bowls I need to dip as well. Let me just. Important, keep your glaze on the move you know because it will it will settle out dip that down like that. And up. hold it a, a few seconds let the excess drips come off put this at this end All right, so what I'll do is take that, push that in there. Yeah, where it says in, uh, on this recipe here, in the red at the bottom, it says, uh, red iron oxide that says four ounces. Yeah, uh, if you want to turn this glaze into a celadon glaze, as I've told you many times, you just add uh, two ounce, uh, four ounces, four ounces. It says there in red of red iron oxide, and um, best to use synthetic red iron oxide. Synthetic red iron oxide. Right, let's get those GP bowls. Where are they? Here they are. GP, GP. Simon, what does GP stand for? <laughs> what does GP stand for, Simon? Well, <laughs> that stands for a very high tech word. It stands for general purpose. <laughs> yep, general purpose. General purpose. Okay, just giving them a, a blowout. Pots they accumulate dust, do they not? So I've got a lid here off of I don't know what marinated mushroom salad, but it makes it a, a good little good little place to put your the pouring jug. Okay, let's do these. Are we in the picture? I don't know, are we? Let's see, yeah. That's about right, okay. So, these are dry GP bowls. 
actually this has got a bit of wood ash on the outside of it because I was, I was demonstrating to somebody or trying to explain about wood ash spraying and I use this one as an example. It's all right. Okay, pouring jug. Give it another quick stir. Give it a stir. Right. So, just pour in about a third like that. All right. Now, holding it on underneath, rotate it, take the glaze to the edge, and then just start rotating. It's a little tricky to do it first. And then pour out. Okay. Then turn it over like that. So if there's a drop here, it goes back on the inside, it doesn't run down the outside. Take your sponge. So you're going to need to have some some water. Close by there. When you do this. I don't know if that is coming out in the or not but you can see there. Just try and get it as straight as you can. It's a little so take it up to the edge about a quarter of an inch from it and then rotate it around like that. Now some of you will find that a little bit difficult to start with. You have to practice it. Whoa! It's like everything, isn't it? Practice. <laughs> Just using the sponge, clean sponge, okay, I'm going to clean it out between each bowl. So it make sure it's thoroughly clean everywhere. Because don't forget these bowls you see are going to be fired in the kiln like that. Face to face. Alright? So if you leave any little bits of glaze there on the top, it's going to stick them together like glue. Just incline the bowl slightly, take it up to about where you need it, about a quarter of an inch, and then you need a little bit of a, a steady hand, but a lot of it is actually, is kind of confidence. All right. You won't get it perfect. It will always look like a handmade pot. But that's okay, isn't it? Because we're not trying to be machines, are we? I can feel there's a bit of wood ash on this one here. There's a bit of wood ash on the side there. I must have I uh, on one workshop I was, I was talking to people about wood ash spraying and I said oh well, yeah I'll show you and I picked up a GP bowl. But these are going to, these will be on the outside, okay so they're only glazed on the inside, the outside is 
is wood ash. So I'll set them up, you see, on the board like that, one on top of the other. And then I'll come along with my my um, my spray my I put my wood ash down in here about half fill it full of wood ash and then top it up with water and then spray out using this as an atomizer um, spray the outside I actually have also a one that I attach to a compressed air bottle or a compressed air one of these all right this gives a much finer spray uh, so those are my two methods of applying the, the wood ash all right Really dipping glaze or double dipping, dipping into glaze a pot is a most satisfactory way of glazing as opposed to, you know, I think spraying it on or trying to paint it on by hand with a brush is a terrible way. You get so many different layers, you get more even even look you see if you just if you dip it so you cast your eye over them after you've wiped them off because it's easy to miss miss an area sometimes what you Let it drip there a few seconds and then tip him over. Oh, this one's got a bit of wood ash on it. Huh. So, I don't know if you can see that there. Use that sponge and take that. You want to sponge it sort of quickly, you don't want to have to keep sponging it too many times because that. It brings up all the grog in the clay body. I don't really want that. It gets rough. Okay. So most of my work these days that I'm glazing, if, if it's glazed with this glaze, I, I, I apply the glaze when the, when the pots are dry. If I'm applying a glaze, uh, I've got a couple of other raw glazes I use um, that I apply when the clay, when the pots are leather hard. And those glazes tend to have a more naturally occurring clay in them. You know, like those ones I 
shown you that I've made from the farmer's field, well that has actually quite a lot of clay in it. And that performs better if I apply it to a leather hard piece as opposed to dry. It's sort of to do with shrinkage, you know. For example, if I put this white glaze onto a leather hard piece, it'll look good initially, but then the pot because it's leather hard, is still in the process of drying. In other words, it's still in the process of shrinking because it hasn't fully shrunk yet, you see. Whereas these dry ones are fully shrunk, they can't shrink anymore. So they're, they're not in motion, if you see what I mean. They've, they've finished their contraction. At least at this stage, they'll contract more in the firing and shrink more. Um, So yeah, that's basically, ooh, see there's a little splash there, you see. All right guys, those are done. And what's waiting for them is, now I could do a little brushwork decoration on the inside of these bowls, which I may very well do. Um, if I didn't decide to do that then Oh, I might put a couple of lines, band a couple of lines at the top here. I might do that. But all that remains is just wood ash with them. Oh. So, I've got another board to do here. I'll do one more and then I think we'll we'll terminate this clip because I said all I needed to say. This is a small piece of sponge uh, from, I think it's a, like a car wash type sponge, which I cut, I cut down, you know. I got lots of little pieces of sponge like that. All right, there it is. So you see me doing the outside of the tankers. There's other videos where you see me doing the inside of the tankers um, that I've done that I've done uh, in the past. And you've probably seen me do the GP bells before. Well, what the heck? I mean, you know, this is this is repeat wear, repeat throwing, repeat. This is keep practicing pottery. <laughs> Yes, you were going to see a few things repeated over and over, but that's actually not a bad thing. Because we need to see things repeated, don't we? Because it then encourages and helps us in our own repeat wear. Just seeing how other people do it. So I hope that's been of some help to you. Please go to my website, simonleachpottery.com. There's pottery tools up there. I don't think there's any pots at the minute, hardly. I've got to get some more up. Um, wheel plans, leech treadle wheels, I have one available. This latest batch of five, four are taken, I have one available. If that interests you, write to me at simonleechpottery at gmail.com. What else? What else? Um, I don't know. 
probably something else, but I can't think of it right now. So, keep practicing. That's what else. <laughs> yeah, that's what else. Keep practicing. I'll see you soon in the next clip. See you around town. Bye bye now. Dee 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 dee.